In this video, we'll cover everything you need to know about media queries in CSS, what they are, how they work, the different types of media queries, and how to combine them to create responsive designs. My name is Alex, and this is a channel about front-end development, where I try to make complex things simple and accessible. Let's start with a simple example. We have a web page with a default light gray background. We'll add a media query to change the background to aqua under certain conditions. First, we use the keyword media, followed by a set of rules. In our case, this rule is screen. I'll explain what that means a little later. Then, inside the curly braces, we describe a regular set of selectors and properties. However, these properties will only be applied if the specified condition is met. So, we wrote screen. This is one of the device types. This means we're defining which devices the rule will apply to. There are several values here. Screen for devices with displays, print for printers, and print preview mode. All is the default value, meaning it applies to all devices. And the last one is speech for screen readers, or devices that read content aloud from the screen. So, since the page is open on a computer, which is definitely a device with a display, the background color has changed to the one defined in the rule, which is aqua. If I press Command plus P or Ctrl plus P on Windows to open the print preview window, the text on the page appears in black, as expected. But what happens if I add a new rule? This time it will be a rule specifically for printers and print preview mode. Let's set the text color to blue for any content. Now, when I re-enter the print preview mode, the text will automatically change to blue. Great! We've just applied styles specifically tailored for different devices. Before we move on, let me explain the operators that exist. Media query rules can be divided using three main operators. AND, used when all conditions must be met. COMMA, applied when at least one of the specified conditions needs to be met. NOT, used to negate a specified condition. The following types of conditions in media queries are called media functions. Essentially, these are properties enclosed in parentheses, which act as rules. When it comes to screen sizes, there are six key values. Width, height, min width, max width, min height, and max height. Using these, we can apply specific styles based on the screen resolution. Let's tweak some existing rules. Instead of using exact values like width and height, I'll use min width and max width, the minimum and maximum width. If the page is opened on a device with a display resolution between 992 and 1200 pixels, the background color will change to aqua. To test this, we'll open the developer tools click on the device's toolbar, select the responsive option, and set a value. Let's start with 700 pixels. Right now the background color is gray. This is the default color. Now let's test the range. Setting it to 1000 pixels, we see that the background changes to aqua. Even if I set it to 1200 pixels, it stays the same. But as soon as I go to 1201 pixels, the background reverts to the default gray color. This way, we've successfully applied styles only within a specific range of screen resolutions. The next media feature is orientation. It helps determine which of the two modes the device is in. Landscape, horizontal mode, where the width is greater than the height. Portrait, vertical mode, where the height is greater than the width. Let's break it down with an example. First, we'll add an H1 element with the text, hello world. Now, we'll set up a media query to apply styles only when the device is in portrait mode, meaning it's held vertically. If this condition is met, we'll hide the heading. Let's see it in action. When the width is greater than the height, meaning the device is in landscape mode, we can see the heading Hello World. But as soon as we turn the device to portrait mode, the heading disappears. This way, we've created a simple rule. The element is only visible in landscape mode. The next two media features we'll discuss are aspect ratio and resolution. While they're not used very often, they're great for fine-tuning styles. The aspect ratio feature lets you define the width to height ratio of a device. In the first case, the CSS properties will apply if the ratio is 16.9, and in the second, if the resolution is 1366 pixels by 768. The resolution feature specifies the pixel density of the output device. You can use either DPI, dots per inch, or DPPX, dots per CSS pixel, as units of measurement. In the first example, the CSS properties apply to screens with a high pixel density, meaning the device's pixel ratio is at least 2. This media feature is particularly useful for targeting retina displays. In the second example, the properties apply to print devices with a resolution higher than 300 dots per inch. And that's everything I plan to share with you today. If you have any questions or want to learn more, feel free to leave a comment, I'd love to help. Thanks for watching and see you next time.